Can you keep up with the pace of market regulatory reform? MarketsReformWiki.com, the place to keep up. I think they're going to be made across the board. You're seeing, you know, every other day a new CEF comes up pretty much. So, so you see investments there. You see the, uh, you see, um, you know, the clearing houses try to figure, you know, try to, you know, build a better clearing model. And, and there's a lot of work being done in the clearing already. There's a significant number. Well, LCH already had a significant position in, in interest rate and, and ICE on the CDS. And, um, and so you're seeing investments being made on the clearinghouse to try to capture that business. Um, and you're seeing the dealers um, invest to try to build out a clearing business. Now, the, 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 the banks and the FCMs are kind of, you know, somewhat conflicted here. You know, the banks want to continue to do bespoke business and, and they're fighting with uh, the regulators to relax the rules so that they can continue to do the business the way it is today. But on the other side, they have the prime business and the clearing business that says, hey, look, there are, these, there are a lot of players that, that can't get into the market now. And if we can create uh, a more um, central limit order by book type market with a centrally cleared back end and figure out how to electronically offset these things in futures or, or some, you know, some other product, um, then you're going to invite a whole lot more people into the market that weren't there. And so... Um, so the, the the prime brokerage um, and clearing ends of the of the banks are trying to build you know build a business to cater to to these new guys that are coming in, and so you've got the old guys who want to keep things the same. You got the new guys who want to try and create new businesses, and they're duking it out. We uh, have estimated that the main uh, banks and broker dealers are investing something like 1.8 billion dollars over three years to build all this clearing infrastructure and that was last year this year and into next year um, so they're, they're investing very significantly in building out clearing the risk management um, integrating with with the CEFs building out uh, what we think are CEF aggregation platforms because I we think that, that what's going to wind up be happening is that there's not just going to be one CEF here and one CEF there and one CEF here. There's going to be multiple CEFs, and what's you know what's going to and the client um, will need to access this liquidity no matter where it is. And so uh, we think that's going to be one of the big plays. That is one of the big plays that you know uh, the dealers are are in the process of building is the ability for me as a client to use one platform to get out to five, six, seven CEFs that are trading the product that, I wanna, that I'm trying to, to, to get to. On the options side, and we see on the equity side, as transactions move from manual to electronic, um, the level of data and the level of messaging just increases you know, geometrically. That, and especially if you're dealing with multiple CEFs and, you, and you're dealing with multiple products in multiple locations, uh, people are going to want to quote in multiple places, and, and the more electronic they are and the more seamlessly connected the arbitrage is, if they can get a good arbitrage between the futures and, and the swaps and, and, and even, you know, uh, corporate bonds or, or, or rates or whatever, um, what you'll see happening is that, that you'll see risk migrating from product, you know, product to product and arbitrage being uh, between all these products together. And so what then, then happens is, well, um, you're going to need, you know, you'll need all this data to really trade, and um, the trades will get smaller. Um, you'll wind up seeing um, uh, the people jockey to be first on the book, um, and then you'll be seeing, you know, the whole cancellation scheme, you know, issues that we're seeing in the equity world, where, or in the options world, where you know the quote to trade ratio can be, you know, one trade for a thousand quotes. Um, not that we're going to get that there that quickly, but you can very easily see that you know this is this is how computers trade. Who's going to own that data? Um, and that's a, a good question. I, the 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 CEFs are going to want to you know try to control it. The dealers are going to want to say, well, it's their quotes. 
Um, and the market data guys are going to be the ones to collect it and redistribute it and, and probably reap the rewards of it. Unless it's regulated to be you know, free, there's going to be a big fight over who owns the data and, and how do you get to it. That, well, the, the way you're going to get to it is you're going to pay a lot for it. We are way behind in issuing the regulations. We're way behind on the proposals. There's a lot of lobbying um, going on, both the CFT and the SEC. Uh, and, and and what's going to start up on you know MIFID and, and EMIR in Europe, um, and there's going to be a lot of battles. And, and the challenge is that uh, you know it's not going to be over till the fat lady sings, and the fat lady ain't singing for a while.